Uh, now we get into the more, uh, let's see, check on the time. Um, what is a steam trap? Well, a steam trap is an automatic valve that opens to drain condensate and closes to trap steam, and that's where we get the name steam trap. Up here we have different types of steam traps. We have the float and thermostatic, like here, inverted bucket, and uh, thermostatic. These are typically for a radiator. They have an angle pattern or straight or vertical. And this is uh, thermodynamic. Here's another example of a thermostatic. I'm going to pass these around as we go through each different one. <coughs> so um, they also help, remove, help improve efficiency, help prevent steam wastage, and rid the system of condensate to protect, protect against water hammer and erosion. Because a lot of times we'll hear water hammer, we think it's normal. It may be common, but it's not something that we should be hearing. So a well-designed system, properly maintained, should never, you should never hear any type of water hammer or any type of pinging or banging in the pipes. The different operating principles of the steam traps, I just glossed over it. There's mechanical, we have thermodynamic, thermostatic. But the one thing to keep in mind is there is no universal steam trap. There's, some companies will come and try to tell you that only use bucket traps or only use this type of trap or only use orifice devices. Um, all may have their place and all may have um, their utility in different applications, but there is definitely no universal steam trap. The reason there are so many different types is that each has its strengths and um, each is more designed for one application compared to another. So the me mechanical type of steam trap is the buoyancy of a closed or open float operates the discharge valve. They are a phase detector. What that means is that they the operating device knows the difference between condensate or steam. They, they know the, the difference between the liquid phase or the, the vapor phase. And within the mechanical um, family, there's a float and thermostatic and inverted bucket, which are the first two that I talked about. <clears throat> so float and thermostatic, this is a, a bit of an older picture. It shows a um, sort of a bellows, most of the time Modern steam traps won't have that big of an air vent. It's probably a quarter of the size. It's a capsule, stainless steel capsule, but the principle is the same. It's a liquid filled um, device that expands or contracts depending on the temperature. So as the name implies, you have two different operating devices. You have a float, that's your main operating device that lets the condensate out, and a thermostatic element. So that's where you get the term float and thermostatic. The thermostatic element is designed to get rid of the air. So if you didn't have that, then the trap would just stay closed because the air would get inside the body of the trap. It doesn't know the difference between air or steam. The, pressure, the air would pressurize to the same pressure as the steam and the float would stay shut all the time. So the, the purpose of the air vent is to rid the steam trap of air. So you have that separate chamber. And if you look at an actual steam trap, you'll notice kind of a boss on the front of the cover, and that's where the air passes out to the outlet. And this particular one, you notice the kind of an H pattern. If you hold it like that, it looks more like an H. And what this allows you to do is you can have in, out, or in, out, or in, out. So that way, it's, uh, you just can't go straight across. You have to go from top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom. And that allows you to uh, it gives you much greater flexibility when it comes to plummet in, depending on your system. So I'll just start passing that around, if you can just show that around. That's a Colton FTX. Um, different manufacturers also make the same H-style trap. Um, so there's, when the, <coughs> when the temperature inside the body of the trap starts to heat up, I left my pointer over here. The element closes off so that expands and shuts off this little passage where the air can pass out and then your, the main float does the rest of the work. At startup, when there's a whole bunch of condensate, some of the condensate could go out through that chamber as well. <coughs> like the element doesn't know the difference between uh, air or condensate. It just stays open depending on the temperature. So if you have a big rush of 
condensate, then you have almost a secondary steam trap inside the body. So this is one of the advantages of a floating thermostatic. And many different companies make float and thermostatic steam trap. Colton is definitely not the only one. <coughs> so this little graphic, this is again back to our that website where it says uh, steam CD. Shows you the operating principle of how the float and thermostatic works. At startup that air vent element is open and air is allowed to exit the trap. Air vent in the open position. Whoops. Air and incondensable gases are allowed to go through the separate chamber. And as the temperature heats up inside the steam trap, the air vent closes off. The condensate fills the body of the trap. Float rises up and see the arm is connect. There is a kind of a, looks like a ball bearing that's welded to the arm that connects the float into this pivot point. And that's what opens and closes the steam trap. Now the one, little kind of mistake in this uh, diagram, it doesn't show that the trap is half full all the time. These traps are designed to be um, full above. There's always going to be some condensate <coughs> sitting at the bottom of these traps and that's what helps keep steam from passing through the, uh, the orifice. This is what you call the orifice, the head and seat, head and seat assembly or the kit. This is what you normally get inside a repair kit. You get a float, an arm, uh, an orifice, it just screws in. It's just uh, basically a bolt with a hole in it and an air vent that clips into place. So normally you'd have condensate filled up almost halfway up the, uh, the body of the trap. That's why if you install these outdoors and the steam is shut off, they will freeze and you'll crack, you have a risk of cracking the body. So this is, some of them will have a drain plug built in for that reason. So it's one of the things to watch out for if it's in installed in an outdoor uh, situation. So as the condensate leaves the, the body of the trap, float falls down and closes it off. So normally that liquid would be a little bit higher up than what's shown in this little diagram. <coughs> now one, one of the operating characteristics of float and thermostatic steam traps is that they're, they're almost like a modulating trap. They mimic the action of a modulating control valve. So you, if you have a, a modulating valve that slowly opens and slowly closes, it's always sort of in between open and close. An F and T trap is very much like that. So it, it's, that's why it's the best choice for a heat exchanger or, or a coil or any type of device that has a modulating control valve because this will very closely match the operating characteristics of a modulating valve. So this shows you the advantages and disadvantages of an F and T trap. So simple construction, continuous discharge, that's what I was just talking about. When it says continuous discharge, it means if there's a little bit of condensate, float rises up a little bit. If there's a lot, float rises up more. So it just it responds very quickly to changes in loads. Hot discharge, it means it discharges at, at steam temperatures so that there's, there's no condensate that gets held back or very little that gets held back. Uh, can function against high back pressure, but we have to be careful to take a whole look at the entire system to make sure that we are always feeding a constant pressure to the inlet of the trap. They are very en energy efficient and because they have a separate air vent, they're excellent at venting air. Disadvantages, relatively large and heavy. The floats can be damaged by water hammer. So if there's a sudden slug of water that enters the trap, you can kind of crush it like a pop can. Not, they don't deal so good with superheat. Um, they're not self-draining, so that's what I was mentioning. It can freeze in outdoor applications, and they can fail close if you um, operate above their operating pressures. So the second trap that's in the mechanical family is the inverted bucket steam trap. So if you look back in the early history of steam trap, and this goes back into the 1800s, they started with the bucket the other way around. And somebody got the smart idea, well, let's turn the bucket inverted and it will operate much better because the early versions of this type of bucket trap had the bucket pointing up. So some smart person decided to invert the bucket and so we have this type of design. So here we have a, an arm with a pivot point and the, the kind of ball bearing that's welded to that arm is here and that's what opens and closes 
the orifice of the trap, and typically they go in that direction. But there's other that other types of models that go in, in through the bottom and out through the top. Uh, different manufacturers make those, but ones that you'll most likely see out in the field are in one side and out the other. And uh, these traps don't modulate like a float trap does. These are more on-off. So they're, if you think of, if you use a valve as a kind of a, an example, the F and T trap is more like a modulating valve. This is more like a solenoid valve or a ball valve that opens and closes. So that's the operation. And the orifice is the, on the sort of the bolt on top. So the way it operates is the float rises up when air and steam get inside, causes the float to the, the bucket to become buoyant. <coughs> and that's what the trap looks like when it's in a closed position. When that steam starts to escape through the small hole at the top of the bucket and it starts to condense, then the weight of the bucket overcomes whatever steam is left inside and it just drops down. So that's, that's why it's kind of a modulating up and down, open and close um, type of operation. So this is again back to our website and it shows how it operates. So trap closed bucket is filled with water, steam enters the trap and creates air pocket at the top of the bucket, which raises the bucket. Bucket rises to the top and closes the seat. So there shows a, a better um, representation of how the internals look like. So there's your, the seat, there's the valve head connected to the bucket. Trap begins to open as condensate begins to flow into the trap. So the, buck, the weight of the bucket overcomes whatever is holding the bucket up. And then it just rises up again. Just up and down, up and down. So that slows it down to uh, the actual operation of the trap was, of course, much quicker than that. It's always going up and down, up and down. And if you listen to a trap, I'll, later on I'll show you our um, listening device that I use to do steam trap audits with. And you actually listen to the trap, you can hear it going up and down and up and down. So it's kind of a constant operation. Getting kind of crowded up here. There you go. And... So these are some of the advantages. One, one of the advantages is that they're rugged. So a lot of times where there's uh, a demanding, um, like a factory or laundry, dry cleaning place, they use bucket traps a lot because they can withstand a lot of abuse. Fast responding to change in the changes in load. Hot discharge, they're like the floating thermostatic. They discharge condensate at steam temperature. And operation, as I mentioned, is open and closed. That's what they mean by cyclical. Uh, poor air venting, they don't have a separate air vent. They're also not very good with superheat. We don't really see a lot of superheat in this area, so it's not really something that's uh, too, too worrisome. And um, they, they also can freeze. If you have them in outdoor applications and the sun, steam is shut off to the system for some reason, because these are also designed to have some water inside the bucket, the, they can freeze and that will crack the body. And they're not self-priming, which that means, um, if we go back a slide, <clears throat> if, if we lose the condensate that's in here and it just gets flushed out, they'll start leaking steam. So they, that's why sometimes um, they can leak steam even though they're still in perfectly good mechanical operation. So the, the fix to that, if you have a case where the, the trap has lost its prime, you just shut off the isolation <coughs> valve on the outlet of the trap. You just shut it for a couple seconds let the trap fill up again, and, and away it goes. So it, it doesn't happen that often, but it can, you can lose the prime inside the trap.